Today we're going to cover how you can scrape TikTok video transcripts within N8N. Now this is super handy if you're building any sort of content repurposing or social media automation, but you can sort of apply this to anything where you need to get a video transcript out of TikTok. So for this, we're going to be using the new data tables feature within N8M. Um, you don't have to use data tables if you want. If you're more comfortable with a tool like Google Sheets or Airtable, you can use that as well. But we will just use the new data tables feature just to minimize the number of tools that we need to use for our build. So I'm going to quickly show you what the build does, and then we're going to start again from scratch and go through it together step by step. So here I've just got the manual trigger, which is very classic for lots of N8 and builds that you don't need to run on an automated schedule. The first proper step is this get rows step. And what this does is just get the values from the data table in N8N. So what I'm doing here is just pulling the list of TikTok video URLs that I actually want to get the transcripts for. And I'll show you what that data table looks like in a little bit when we create it from scratch. But this is basically getting this column of TikTok video URLs that we will then use to actually get the transcripts. The next step is we've got the TikTok video URLs. We need to get the actual transcripts for each of those TikTok videos, right? So I'm using the Dumpling AI get TikTok transcript endpoint here. So to <clears throat> get the docs for that, you just need to go to the Dumpling AI docs and follow along there. I will be going through this in a lot more detail when we actually build this. So don't worry if it feels a bit fast at the moment. And once we do that, we use the upsert rows, which is also part of the new NAN data tables feature, just to update that data table with the transcript for each of the videos that we wanted to scrape. All right, so that's high level. Now we're gonna start from scratch and build everything step-by-step step together. So I wanna go back to just the start screen, don't need to save this. And what we're gonna actually start with is the data table, right? So if you don't have data tables enabled, make sure you are on the latest version of NAN and you should be able to see data tables. If you're not trying to do that, my last video I covered on how you can actually enable the data tables feature. And as I said before, you can also use Google Sheets or Airtable if you want. Conceptually, it'll be exactly the same. So here I'm just gonna press create data table and I'm gonna say TikTok demo two. This is just where I'll be storing the TikTok videos I want to scrape as well as the transcripts that I do actually find, right? So first column would just be the TikTok video URL. And for the type, I'm just gonna leave it as a string. So this is just where I'm gonna put in all the different TikTok videos that I want to scrape, right? So I'll just go through and copy the URLs in. And then the next column I'm gonna add is the actual transcript. So this is where we're gonna save the transcript for each TikTok video URL once we have it. Now this is just sort of, um, I guess, one way to go about it. You could sort of say, I wanna scrape like most of the recent videos on a TikTok profiles, then you don't have to paste each individual URL individually. Um, and if you wanna see how to do that, I can make a separate tutorial video on that. But for this video, you can just sort of manually specify which videos you want and the automation will scrape all of them. So we've got the, the data table set up. I'm just gonna copy over a few video URLs. So I'm gonna turn over to this one. This is all just on my page, my TikTok page. So I'm just gonna copy the URL here and paste it in here. I'm gonna do, let's do, three of these, so that's one, there we go. that's two, just to stretch this out, just so you can see what I'm doing, and let's do a few more, yeah, okay, I'm going to show you three, and then let's see some other ones, maybe something like this one. Yes. So we'll do one more just for nice round number. Okay, let's see. Do this one. Cool. So we've got our data table set up. You see we've got a column of video URLs. Um, and if you've seen my previous NNN videos, you know that there are many ways to populate this database other than doing it manually, but just for this tutorial, we're just doing it manually, and we've got an empty column of transcript, right? So what we want our automation to do is scrape each of these videos and fill out this transcript column, right? And that's what we're gonna be doing right now. So I've got the data table set up. Remember, it's called TikTok Demo 2. For now, I'm gonna create the workflow. So I'm gonna create a new workflow. Um, and here, I'm gonna do a manual trigger. You can obviously switch this up depending on what you're building. And that initial step is really just pulling out that list of TikTok video URLs. So I'm just gonna search data table 
and there is a get rows function here. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to choose the data table that we just created, which was TikTok demo 2. And we don't need any conditions and I just wanted to return all, right? Or you can say here there's a limit of 50. Uh, either will work right now because I only have five <laughs> rows in my data table. I'm just going to say return all. If I execute this step, you can see that we've pulled in all the data from the data table, right? And we've got the five URLs here. So now we have the five URLs, all we need to do is iterate through each of those five URLs, but call the get TikTok transcript endpoint from Dumpling AI. So we're going to use the HTTP node for that, right? So I'm going to type in HTTP request. And here is where you start to sort of map in the API. So you can see here, it is a post endpoint. There's also sometimes a shortcut you can do is if you can find an example of a curl um, request here, you can copy it. And N8N actually has an import curl option. So you can just paste that in like this and press import and it pastes it in. You still will need to do some editing because of the way that N8N works. So for example here, we don't want to actually hard code our API key into a HTTP node within N8N. That's a very bad security practice. So I'm going to delete this header and just turn off headers entirely. Instead, you want to use the authentication feature within N8N. So for Dumpling AI, you can see in the docs, they use a bearer token. It's also up here in sort of the API reference if you're using Dumpling AI for the first time, but they use a bearer authentication method. So you want to use a generic credential type. In here, there is bearer auth, and I've already got it set up, but I'll quickly show you what it looks like if you're setting it up for the first time. You would press create a new one, and you would just need to copy in your bearer token or your API key, right? And to do that, you just need to sign up for a Dumpling AI account, go to the API key section here, and just create a new secret API key. Um, and it will only show it to you once, so make sure you copy it, and then come back here and just paste it in the bearer token section, right? And then it should work. Now, more importantly is the actual body that we're sending through, right? So here it's got examples from the curl request that we copied over earlier, but we are not using this example video, right? We're using our own videos. And we also don't need this Espanol language. I'm just gonna straight up delete preferred language. And here I'm going to drag in the TikTok video URL, right? And that's basically it. So now when I press execute step, it will run through each of those five URLs from our data table and get the TikTok video URL for each of those videos. So for each video, I think it takes a couple of seconds. So over five videos, it'll take maybe half a minute, something like that. Um, and it should come back. Oh, that was actually quite fast. Okay. So it's come back. You can see that we've got for this video, this is the transcript. This second video, we've got another transcript and so on and so forth, right? third video, and we basically got it for all five. If I go to JSON mode, it might be a little bit easier to see. So that's transcript one, transcript two, transcript three, and all the way up down to transcript five. So now we have all the transcripts. And here it's sort of like, depending on what you're building, you can do a number of different things. So if you're doing content repurposing, where it's like every time you pu publish a TikTok video, you want to turn it into a LinkedIn post, as an example, you can then here put in your large language model step. So pass it into GPT-5 or Claude 4 and um, get it to rewrite your transcript into a LinkedIn post or whatever social media post that you want. If you want to see a dedicated tutorial on how to do that, just comment below and I can also make that tutorial. But um, if you've watched my previous videos, conceptually, it's quite similar to what I've done in the past. So yeah, if you're doing that, that's this is where you would do that. For this example, like I said before, we're sort of updating the um, data table that we made earlier, which is this TikTok demo too, right? We want to fill out the transcript column. So to do that, we're going to come here, add a new node and do data table again. And what we're going to do is actually upsert. So you can do update as well. You can do update or upsert. But um, so just to explain the difference. So insert is adding a entirely new row to your data table. Update is updating a existing table. And upsert is it inserts if it doesn't already exist, right? So it either updates. And then if you don't find a row to update, it just creates a new row. You could use update or upsert, completely up to you, but we'll basically be the same settings anyways. So I'm just going to use upsert just because I prefer it, but no real reason. It's probably more technically correct to use update. I just like using upsert. Um, so here is what we need to do. You need to choose the data table, so TikTok demo two. And here it says map each column manually, which we can do. I wonder if it would map automatically, but I like to be safe. So we're going to map it by the URL. 
So the URL is here. So we're just saying find the relevant URL and then match and then update the um, transcript column, right? So we don't want to update the URL, right? So I'm just going to delete that and we're just going to update the transcript. So I'll drag in the transcript here. And now I'm going to execute this step. And you can see it's run already. So that's the benefit of the NAN down table. It runs really quick. Um, and if I come back here and give this a quick refresh, we should see the transcript column filled out. Very nice. So you can see it's all filled out for each of the videos with the transcript for each video. And now it's all nicely saved here. You can obviously then do whatever you want with this, right? You can even turn this into blog posts or something like that. So completely up to you. And yeah, that's basically it for this on this tutorial on how to scrape TikTok video transcripts in NAN. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. If you have any thoughts on what I should make a video on next, also post that below. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.